Nightlords have always been one of my favorite Chaos Legions. A couple of years ago I read the fantastic Soul Hunter trilogy from Aaron Dembski Bowden and after that I just had to own a Nightlords army. At first I thought it's gonna be enough if I just equip a couple of Chaos Space Marines to look like Nightlords, but it was just not as cool as I imagined it to be. So I ended up ordering a bunch of stuff from Forge World, including a couple of Dreadnoughts, Terminators and even a hero. And as usual I was super excited at first. I put everything together, I primed them and I was really anticipating and planning all the paint jobs I would be doing. But then something new and shiny came along and these guys were just sitting there and gathering dust. But a couple of days ago I walked past them and then somehow inspiration struck me to make a Night Lords video, so here we are. And once the decision was made I just had to figure out what to start with and I decided for the Terminators because they fit right in the middle. I reserved my best paint job probably for the Dreadnoughts and maybe the Hero and then just do something simple for the line troops. So in today's video I'm going to be painting up these five terminators into a grimdark parade ready standard only using the brush. So that's the background story, let's start painting and let's start with the base coats. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. I base coated all of these guys black and I decided not to use a zenithal highlight this time because I wanted them to be, well, kinda grimdark and I felt that if I use a zenithal, the base colors would be too bright for my purposes. These models have a crazy amount of detail on them and I decided to go with something basic first, but also paint something that is really important, which is the armor. Once the armor is there, it's much easier to see what other elements I will have to paint. And because Citadel already conveniently has a color named after Night Lords, I might as well just use it. I applied multiple layers of this color, usually I would say at least two or maybe three, and I wasn't very thin on it either. Because I'm painting over black, it's even more important for me to fully cover everything and make sure that I reach full opacity. But wherever I could, I was trying to maintain the black lines between the different elements so that later on I don't have to shade specifically for that reason. And and of course we are talking about Night Lords so they would of course have some interesting fashion choices. Because who wouldn't want to run around with a little bit of flayed skin around their armor? In the case of some of these guys it's not even just a little bit. I used Bugman's Glow to cover all of these and once again giving it multiple coats whenever needed so that I fully cover that black undercoat. In some of the deepest crevices I left some of the black behind just so that it's easier for me to shade it later on. This was the point that I realized how many little bits and bobs these guys have hanging around their armor so I thought it's time to cut some corners. They have a lot of bone elements obviously because all the skulls and all that but there are also these tablets or sheets of paper, I'm not entirely sure. So to save a little bit of time I decided to use the same base coat on them which is Zendry Dust and then later on I can differentiate them with different shades and different colors of highlights. And you really need to give it to the Night Lords, they know how to intimidate their opponents. They have a whole Guardsman squad's worth of bones hanging around them. And you know how a Chaos Space Marine would have a skull sitting on top of the armor? Well, these guys have a whole pile of them on their armor. Finally, I base coated all the Night Lord wing symbols on their shoulder pads into corn red. With all the normal acrylics done, it was time to move on to the metallic colors. For all the steel elements, I used Gunmetal from AK Interactive because I just like its coverage more than Lead Belcher, but of course you can just use Lead Belcher as well if that's what you have and that's what you like. There is a surprising amount of metal elements on these models and a crazy amount of chains hanging on them. And once again, because I'm discovering more and more things on these models that I need to paint, I'm cutting some corners. Instead of using a whole bunch of different metallic colors, I'm just going to use this steel and a little bit of gold later on, and then later I can use a trick to reshade, let's say, the steel into something else like bronze or copper. But for the most prominent goldish elements, I decided to use this bronze color actually from AK Interactive, once again because of the beautiful coverage and the great and saturated color. And with that, the base coating step is done, but unfortunately that also means that we are in the ugly phase of the miniature painting process, meaning that the minis look pretty flat and without definition. And normally the way to fix it is to use washes or shades, but instead I'm going to be using contrast paints. In my experience, contrast paints are just better at shading than normal washes. For example, here I'm using Gilliman's Flash to give this bronze a nice old and worn look. And if you really want to knock back the shine and make it a little bit more grimdark, then you can just apply multiple layers. For all the bone elements, I use the most obvious choice, which is Skeleton Horde. But I didn't use this on some of these other elements like these paper sheets, or tablets around the armor because I used Agrax Earthshade for that instead so that they are a little bit different. To knock back the shine of all the steel elements I used Basilican Grey because this would also create nice definition around them. 
Finally, I used some Skeleton Horde and Gilliman's Flash on some of the steel bits to create some other kinds of metal. If you apply a couple of layers of Gilliman's Flash and especially Skeleton Horde on just steel, you are going to stain it into something that resembles more like gold or bronze or copper. I use this mostly on the guns because I wanted them to be a little bit different from the gold or bronze elements of the armor. Finally, I used some Flash Terrace Red on the wings on the shoulder pads, which I felt was very appropriate here. Alright, the shading phase is over and that means that our minis are way more defined than they were before, but unfortunately the side effect of this is that they are also much much darker. To be honest, even at this stage they look quite cool and if you don't mind the lack of highlights and the darker look, then you might as well just leave them as they are. But I really wanted to get these guys up to at least a parade ready standard, so let's start highlighting. Once again I decided to start with the biggest and most impactful element, which is the armor, and I used Aldovgard blue as my first highlight. And the process is going to be very very simple here, because all I'm going to do is edge highlights, since I decided that with this paint job I will try how far I can get with only those without any volumetric highlights. So all I'm going to do here is to highlight every single edge, really every single one across all the five models with this blue. And I'm not gonna lie, this will take you some time, but ultimately I think it's really worth it. The huge advantage of having a hand-painted base coat instead of having something that was painted by airbrush is that if I make any mistakes here it's super easy to correct with just going back with the Night Lord's blue and painting over the mistake. Also with this first color I don't really have to be very precise or very very thin because I will be painting over some of this and I still want this to show up so if it's a bit thicker it's actually even better. Once I was done outlining all the edges then I switched to Fenrisian grey for my next highlight. And this was a much simpler process because I didn't have to use it on so many edges, I was using it on only let's say 60-70% of the edges that I painted before, only on the ones that pointed up mostly. I was also trying to be careful not to cover the whole edge that I painted with the previous color, or if I did then I painted thinner so that the previous color still shows through. And the final step was author and gray, which is a huge step up from the initial color if you look at it. It's almost white, so I had to be very very sparing with this. I used this as thinly as I could and only on the most visible, most prominent edges that are pointing up. And even then only on a part of the edge. And with that I was done and it looks like this compared to a model that was only shaded and not highlighted at all. It definitely takes some time but I think it's worth it. After I was done with the armor I proceeded around the models and highlighted all the other elements using two or three highlight colors. For all the skins I used the original Bugman's Glow and then Cadian Fleshstone and Kislev Flesh. For all the skulls and bones I used the original Zendri Dust and then Ushapti Bone finishing up with some Raid Bone. The bat wings I highlighted with Mephiston Red, was Daka Red and then the final highlight was Squig Orange. I didn't want the steel elements to be too bright so I just ended up highlighting them with the original gunmetal. I only used a little bit of Stormhorse Silver to highlight some of the most prominent edges, just a tiny bit. On the bronze I used the original bronze from AK Interactive to apply the first highlight. And then I used a small amount of Stormhorn Silver, mixed it in with the bronze and used it on the upper facing edges of the trim mostly to highlight it a bit further than the rest of the metal elements. Two of the models actually had something that resembled a plasma gun, so I decided to use a plasma glow effect as well. After this much highlighting I was basically done with the model, so I wanted to do something simple but still something that looked like a plasma glow. I mixed in some flow improver with white and created a 50-50 mix, and simply painted this mix over the plasma coils. The flow improver makes it behave like contrast paint when it just flows into the crevices and leaves the top of the coils much darker. Once it dries, and it dries really slow because of the flow improver, you can simply apply fluorescent paint over it, whatever color, and it will look like a glowing plasma coil. And with that the five models with all their bits and bobs were finished and the end result looks something like this.
Thank you very much guys for watching the video. I hope you will learn something new. Maybe you will paint your own Night Lord's Army at some point. I see you guys in the next one. In the meantime, happy painting and don't forget Ave Dominus Nox.